think you're on. Come on, I can land now. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is Ginger Cook, and this is Acrylic Monday. We're, we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to continue with our um, last week's uh, cropping challenge. I'm going to show you the outcome of how those of you who sent in your suggested crops. We're going to do one of the crops on the live show. We're going to tell you about some other stuff. We've got giveaways to happen. Uh, this is an exciting show. You don't want to miss it. Um, and let's just start coming right back down to our uh, table here. John, as you know, um, we've got some giveaways. And uh, the first thing you see is the Salvador paints that I'm using here. And thanks to the Salvador Paint Company has uh, uh, given us, uh, uh, well, they're going to be sending you. We're not. They're going to be sending somebody from the, who's watching our show live as, as it first airs, uh, a brand new box of the, of the extra large uh, Salvador paints, 24 colors plus an extra white and this is the kit that will be uh, offered today and um, one just like that or one just like that, not this kit you're not getting ours like we're not giving ours up <laughs> fine. okay but just so you know that you're gonna get so some of the, plus the original painting I'm doing tonight some women will have a chance to win it's it's nice to be able to watch these shows uh, in your leisure and sometimes go over them again for the tips we give after we air but boy if you can catch us live there's there's some real bending and catching us live. Plus, we have an opportunity to answer questions that uh, from our audience uh, uh, that in the chat section. That's really nice to be able to do, but perhaps you're on a device that doesn't allow you to chat and you feel a little left out. Don't do that. Just use the contact us on one of our websites. Um, uh, acrylic painting with gingercook.com. Use the contact us and just say, I have a question for Ginger. Can she answer it on the next show? And, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, we, 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 we might remember to do that. Uh, we'll try to remember to do that, right? <laughs> but, you know, that's so. We, it, we do uh, our this best. Is different. And we ask everybody that uh, because we just have a short amount of time every week, we ask that we keep the chat to the pertinent stuff that's going on with the painting and painting instruction and questions about. About painting. We know a lot of stuff's going on in the world right now that would be fun to chat with, and uh, but we, we ask that you kind of reserve that. For, we want to take a we want to take a little break from all that chat. Yeah, and let's just focus on painting for the, tonight and what we can do. And um, so anyway, that's what's going to be happening here. Hey, we do want to thank our moderator for being here, present and accounted for, and that would be moderator Lynn from the Canada office. Thank you, Lynn, for joining us hey, Lynn, once again. Welcome, hey, welcome, Canada. Eh? Hey, yeah. and, uh, Steffi, Steffi and Lady Liz, and I thought I saw Luann in here somewhere. Uh, I'm sure Ju Judy's running around hey, somewhere. Hey, hey, you guys. So we, we thank you. You guys, these moderators, they volunteer their time every week. I mean, they probably, you know, they come up and, and what they do, which is so key, is that they allow you to have friendly chats without, you know, scammers coming in and, and disrupting. Without and, the riffraff. And the riffraff. They, 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 they're kind of like the chat police in a way. Ooh. <laughs> just the chat police, right? Um, um, it just keeps it friendly. It, it keeps it friendly. And and, um, and that's what we're all about. You know, it's it, look, if you think of painting as a language, and that's what you're learning. When you're learning to paint, you're learning the oldest language there really was, the way to communicate with other people. It's one of the oldest languages. So it's what, you know, people could draw on a cave wall. And regardless of where you go in the world, if you draw a tree, pretty much regardless of what anybody speaks, they understand tree, they get that. And so don't don't try to be Tolstoy your first week, right? If you're learning to paint, start learning the words. Maybe you learn the word for pine tree, and maybe you learn the word for an apple tree, but that doesn't mean you have any idea how, how to do an oak tree. And then you can't beat yourself up because I thought I could do trees, but here's this oak tree and I can't do it. You learn this step by step, but you learn it. And it's really fun. And if you think of it, it's just a way to exercise your brain, see shapes and challenges, mix colors. All this can be so simple. But one of the things that happens is that um, with the advent of the camera, I remember my first brownie camera when I was, remember those brownie cameras when I was 13, I took it on a trip to Europe. 
and I was caught, and I remember going to these grounds at some palace in England, one of the palaces, and they had these swans, and I had left the group to take pictures of swans. That was a terrible photographer, but you know, it was so interesting. I, I and then you know you you remember, but now everybody pretty much has a camera on their phone, and. Photography is not thought of as much of an art as it used to be. But oftentimes something that will make a good photograph makes a terrible painting, you know? And people take photographs for different reasons. And so when you look for free photos online, you can't assume that the person that took the picture is any better at taking pictures than you are. So then it becomes your discerning eye here. Now you've got to use your eyes to say, as an artist, there's something in this photograph that appeals to me what could I share as an artist in a painting to make it appeal to somebody else? And that's really what, that's the edit benefit of cropping a photo. You may see that may, maybe the photographer just has too much visual noise. And I can explain a little bit of visual noise. Years ago, I had a, um, a professional office designer person, organizer, come to work as we had some rental properties in Houston was in our, our three car garage, the whole top of it, which is now my art studio, used to be um just to table suggests and tests and computers and all that stuff, and copiers and printers. And my brother and myself and my ex husband, who's now my ex husband, and a couple other people, we all, you know, worked over our garage. But it was a hot mess. And it was really, it most, it finally got down to, you know, my ex husband and I were the only ones left in it, but we still had all the desks and all the stuff. And it, I, I didn't even like to go in the room. And so I hired this woman to come and, um, she was very nice. Uh, George wouldn't get out of bed. He thought she was going to criticize him. He couldn't stand it. You grow from you. <laughs> you grow from from understanding stuff, you guys. Not not from hiding from the instruction, you know. And so, you know, I paid her, and she just was very kind. And she said, "What's that?" And she pointed to a cord on the wall. And it was just a part of a phone cord that had belonged to a telephone at one time, kind of curled. It was just hanging on a nail and going, it's a phone cord. Why is it on the wall? I don't know. What's that? You know, that, that's a copier. Why is it over here? Well, because it wouldn't, the electric didn't plug in somewhere else or would play a fuser. What about that computer? Well, nobody uses it. Well, why is it still there? Well, someone might fix it. Well, who? I don't know. And it went on like that. And finally, she looked at me and she said, in the kindest way possible, she said, have you ever heard of visual noise? Visual noise will drive anybody out of a room if it's messy, and it'll tell you what, it'll drive you right out of a painting. If you can take, you can take that to bank. Visual noise is what ruins most paintings. The thing is, you always want to ask yourself, what can I take away and not ruin the effects. And so when you come down here and you look at a painting, a photograph, this was our challenge yesterday. And we've got a cute cat and we've got a candle and a teapot and some nice, the, the lighting on this is very good. I mean, there's an awful lot about this photograph that's very good. But, you know, you have to ask yourself, what is the subject? Who are we talking about? Is there a lot of visual noise? And there was. So what we asked you guys to do was to take a look at this photograph and tell us how you'd crop it. Now, there are a lot of good answers for this. There were a ton of you that came with brilliant answers. We oh, we picked out a few. We had over, what, 30 people that, um, yeah, that entered. Yeah, 40 right? on this one. 40, close to 40 people that sent, that sent this in. And because uh, this is, you know, it's all very well to watch me paint area. I'm going to paint something. You guys, this woman ever going to paint or is she going to shut up? No, I can't, you know, it's like... Anyway, so we had a lot of wonderful answers, and I'm going to show you just a few of them. Um, let me see. Let me just put this one up here because there's some fun. Wanda sent in just, she liked just the leaves. She thought that was really pretty. And Linda thought that this uh, candle, just focused on the candle. And Linda, you're absolutely right. That would make a nice painting, okay? And then Lisa C. thought that you could do the, the She did a lot of rearranging. She rearranged some stuff. But um, generally speaking, um, that probably wasn't a good arrangement, Lisa, and in our design class tells you why. You probably would have wanted something overlapping something else. These are all too much the same height, 
And so it, it did, that probably didn't make for a good arrangement. Uh, Judy B had the, the, this was probably where I was thinking at first with the cat and just the teapot. I really like that. We have one a lot Judy of people thought, did that. A lot one. of people did this one besides Judy, and I thought that was really good. Um, Karen uh, wanted to put the candle, which, you know, your eye goes first to the lightest light and the darkest dark, okay? So what happens is if you put the candle dead center, your eye goes bing, dead center, this teapot sort of taking your, this line's taking your eye right out of the picture. And um, the rest of it, prob this probably wasn't a good crop, but you were thinking about it. That's the thing, you were thinking about it, right? So then we had um, Sherry, and she thought the glasses made some sense. And I thought so, too. Um, I wasn't sure, uh, and you could always clean out the scarf. And I thought the, you see how these pencils are coming in? This axis is to stop, this fall. The glasses are going this way. You have a nice triangular picture pattern. I thought I thought you could do something with this, Sherry. Absolutely. Absolutely. You could, you have to work with these a little bit, but you could do something. And then, um, again, we had Elizabeth B. You put that can candle dead center um but it had a still had a nice triangular picture pattern so i might have uh, tried to do something a little more different with that but it was it was close okay so then the one that we liked that we had a couple we had one we had two that we really well a bunch of them we really liked but the two i have one that i thought i could do easily on the show but my favorite one is this one by Pamela T. And what she did was she reversed the cat. We've got our triangular picture pattern here, or maybe even like an S. And th th we've got the, the candle over here goes up like this. Um, this was a really nice arrangement. And I like the, 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 the way this all came out. So this, and actually what we're, we want to share with you is what we're, um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with this picture because you won't believe it. So stand by for, for, for some of the rewards that we're going to show you, the reward we're going to show you for doing all these. This is the one uh, sent in by Steffi, one of our moderators, and she thought that this teapot with the two leaves made a great picture. And I agree with you, Steffi. That's, a, then that's something I could easily do on YouTube too. Now what I did was I decided what I would do was I took that and I thought what if I changed the colors because I like the design and the lights and darks so instead of painting it all in the grays I'm going to paint it more in the tones these earth tones uh, with the teapot. That's sort of my plan. Okay so uh, I'm going to go ahead and trace that on as I tell you about other stuff. John any uh, did you have some? having a sound issue. I can't find my headset to plug in to see what the problem is. Uh, so nobody can hear me after nobody all that? Nobody can hear you. You're just staticky and they're complaining. Oh, well, John's looking for some way to fix the sound. Otherwise, we'll just quit for the day. It's always an option. That's true. We could quit. We could just, we could just not do it. All right, this is the transfer paper. Let me see if I can find that. Can the other iPad show you what's going on, or can you tell? No, I have to have a, something in my ears. All right, so that's my transfer paper. That's a Sorrel transfer paper. If you guys aren't using that, um, it's really good stuff. It's, it's um, It allows you to take any image and transfer it on your picture. Now, what if you didn't have that, though? Okay, so you live somewhere, you don't have this stuff. Um, what you can do is take soft chalk and rub the back of a piece of paper and smudge it with like a, a piece of cotton or Kleenex or something, do two or three coats of it, blow off the chalk, and it will act like a, a carbon paper for you. And you can use chalk, and chalk actually works. Sometimes transfer paper will not work if the paint's really thick underneath it. Transfer paper oftentimes does, isn't, it just doesn't want to play anymore, and you can, chalk always works. It's a little more messy, but chalk always works. So, um, you're still looking for that. No. Ask the girls. No. Judy, how bad is the sound? Do we need to just cancel the show for tonight? Damn, I picked the light orange because I wanted to have this come through. I had some choice of different colors. And um, 
uh, I, the brown, oh, well, I can do the brown. The thing is, I, I wanted the light on these leaves in the teapot, so therefore I'm using the orange, the light orange canvas. Um, uh, if I was doing this larger, I would probably do two different backgrounds. We changed I, nothing. Huh? They're saying it's good now. I didn't do anything. Okay. Um, if I were doing this larger, say 16 by 20, I probably would do two different backgrounds. I'd probably do a, a dark up here under painting and maybe a light down here. Just a thought, you know, just might, might do it that way. So what I want to do is just, um, let's see, do I have my Sorrel transfer paper on here? No. So what I want to do now is just tape that on and um, uh, We've got a neat challenge for you too. We've got another challenge for you for next week. We think you guys are liking these challenges a little bit, these cropping challenges. So we've got a cool one for you for coming up for next week too. And um, I wonder if I should show you the start I have on the um, the one painting. Should I show them the start I've got on it so far? Uh, maybe I'll later I'll show you what I've started on on this large one, the one I told you I was going to do bigger. I've started on that. I'm just not done. And um, let's put this well, here. I want to welcome uh, Tonya for being here, too. We missed her earlier. Oh, hi, Tonya. And Luann, she did show up. Okay, So we great. have a full staff. We have a full staff, right? Plus, we have the stuffy staff. we got Chester's here, right? Yeah, he should be the one working on sound, but who knows what's going on. Well, we should make a note to find our headphones, don't you think? I just add that to my list. <laughs> we did some fine to add phones, right? All right. So you guys know about transfer paper. You should always test it to make sure that um, one you put it on the right way. Make you put it on the you can put it on upside down, right? So you can see see the little white mark there. So there we know it's. A, and I like to use a pen because. Um, um, I'm not sure a pencil would work very well. Pencil doesn't work as well. You can push harder with a pen and you can go over it a few times. And um, the nice thing about this is if you were going to, someone says, oh, that's so nice. Would you make me one? Um, you can still, you can keep these and then just use a different color pen to go over it again. Hey, we'd like to thank Jigger for the donation that came in through the Super Chat. He is our Canadian, he or she, I'm not sure which. But thank you very much from uh, Canada. Oh, thank you very much. And I I want to give a shout out to Jenny H. She, she is finally on. I saw her. Finally on. I, um, actually, she sent me this fabulous day makeup. The kind, you know, not the kind of heavy stuff I wear for the show, but, you know, something you actually might go out in public in. You know, that <laughs> just. Not you know. that you go out in public with the other stuff. I get it. Well, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You always have to put gal. a little bit more makeup on for, you know, for the show cause so, so you don't look like you've faded out into like a vampire. Empire. And um, uh, and living uh, in the side of the house all these months, um, I'll tell you what, I could be mistaken for one. Anyway, she sent me this fabulous um, um, kind of like a BB cream stuff. It's um, It really works great. And um, I liked it a lot. And when we, we, John and I went out, I guess, uh, got our final uh, uh, COVID shot on um, Friday, and I want you to know I tried it then, and uh, I felt very good about going out in that. And you know, it's funny. I've got, I got to tell you a funny story about this. I've told no one to talk about this except I get to. Does that make sense? <laughs> but um, you know, my watch tells me when my heart rate's up. Okay, it, it, if my heart rate's gone up, my watch will tell me. And I was sitting there, very calm. I thought I was so calm. You guys, you can't believe it. I felt so relaxed and serene when I could have been a Buddhist monk. I was so serene, right? And my watch says, your heart rate just went up to 104. So somebody <laughs> wasn't as calm as they thought, right? Which I thought was kind of funny in a way, right? All right, so this is pretty simple, right? This is what we've got. Probably should have used a different color. You can't see the white. You can't even see that, can you? Well, well, white probably wasn't the thing to do, was it? Now I have to go back over this with something else. But could I go back over this? I'm sorry. I would wipe that one off before you do it. No, just take a piece of it. Just take a, just as fast as just take a colored pencil. 
go over it, right? Oh, just go over what you already got. Yeah, I mean, I've already got it. I want to do that, right? You gotcha. guys can kind of see it. I thought it, you wanted to do the whole kit and caboodle again. No. The whole enchilada. No. But anyway, we're. Um, I wanted to say that um, uh, both John and I feel fine. Never had any reaction to anything. We got the Pfizer and we were fine. Uh, we're a little concerned about the Canadians having to wait 120 days between their vaccines, though. Yeah, we hope that that situation. Because uh, um, we were told that it should soon. be had within 45 days. Well, yeah, but again, this is we're off topic, John. Yeah, we are. Sorry, I you, couldn't you help. Can't, you can't break the rules. I get to. You, nobody else. Hey, it's our rules to break. Yeah, no, it's mine actually. No, oh, it's your serious. rule. It's just my rule. Oh, but see, you, you're the one that started it, though. Yeah, but I told you I could break them. <laughs> but the rest of us can't break. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Don't do as I say well, or I, do. I, I learned that from my mother. It was never <laughs> don't do as I do. It was always don't do as I say. It's worked for me for years, right? Oh, I see. I got you. What am I missing here? What am I missing? What is this? Well, that was the arm coming down. That's uh. Yeah, this was this came down like this, and then this came up like this. I guess that wasn't anything. I just thought it was something. All right, that's it. That's all there is to this, you guys. Make sure you give a thumbs up if you want to see the release of the link for tonight's giveaway contest. Yeah, you get, we need a th thumbs up for that, and I'll just. Uh, three hundred and one people. Three hundred and one. Come on, you guys. Let's 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 get this going. So. Anyway, we're hoping you're enjoying these this, these crappy things, and and also here's the thing about being an artist is that um, we you every one of us is going to see the world differently. As and, our crop challenge shows us. Yeah, we see the world differently, and here's the thing: we're gonna sometimes you know we always you, you know one of the things about going to see, hearing a comedian talk maybe at, at a comedy show, and he'll tell you about going to an airport and his experience, and you think, and I had that is that's exactly right. That's that's what happened to me, and you think it's hysterical. Well, he's we, he just showed us something about a world we hadn't thought about. And as artists, that's what we do for people all the time. Maybe we show a brighter side, a happier side to the world. Maybe it's a sad side. Um, uh, but in any event, um, it's a side. It's a, that's one of the benefits of being an artist is. Um, that, that you can ex express things in your world that are going on in a way that perhaps other people haven't seen them because you're everybody has their own unique perspective you know I mean you really do and 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 that and it's important so um, I'm just using a little burnt sienna and burnt umber here and to answer your question the burnts are um, uh, burnt sienna is a little translucent, but burnt umber is very opaque. Okay, look, I can kind of show you that with the burnt sienna on here. Can let's see, let me get a little of that color. Tends to tendency to be a little bit more. Oh, I that was the orange I put with it. There you go. Let's put I put a little orange in there too. Put this light orange color and just I want sort of a not not just one color. What PJ says, after doing learning, cropping, and design, I will take different types of photos. Yeah, I think I think you will. I, th I think you, you see can't the help world it. a little bit more critical. Yeah, and, and um, I remember, and I'll tell you a funny story about my daughter um, when she was in college. Oh, is this the art sherpa? This is the art sherpa. Oh, right? let's throw her under the bus. Yeah, let's go throw her under the bus <laughs> and, and just say hi to um, to Linda, who's probably watching now too. You can t you can tell her I told tell the story. I don't mind. She took this photography class. And it was really benefited her a lot. She learned darkroom and developing and all that stuff. And she took it for two years. But when she and the reason she took it was because um, she'd gone on a vacation to the Caribbean, and she came back with some photos. And she got this. You know, back in those days, it was a new thing. They you could get a little kind of a portable camera that would take um, pictures under the water. It was waterproof. So she'd gone out swimming, and she ended up taking pictures of her kind of mostly her feet in the sand. She really didn't get any particular pictures of underwater anything. And um, and I said, you know, perhaps a photography class would be a good plan. But most of us aren't, you know, don't have the 
um, luxury uh, or the time to take a photography class, though so probably probably all of us should take a photography class. It wouldn't be a bad thing to do. John's taken one, and he has a wonderful sense of design, and I'm sure that his photography class has really helped him, right? But, um, uh, you know, learning how to... Um, uh, Take good pictures and and take and taking pictures as an artist is a little bit different, isn't it, John? Than taking pictures. Oh, um, absolutely. A, a, as a as a photographer, so you you take, the, photo the, the photograph is going to stand on its own, whereas a painting you got to think a little bit further. What do you really want to show? Because you know you take the kitty cat that we just did the cat and the, there's a lot in the subject. As a, as a photograph, it's very nice. But as a painting, it's way too busy. Yeah, see? So, um, and that happens a lot. Because as a photographer, we're going to take everything we can. And a lot of times when we are when we're on vacation, I will take shots further back, knowing that I can crop them and redesign them after I have them. But I'd rather have more than I need, knowing I can crop it, than being too tight and missing something. But, you know, thanks to that photography class, when Cinema and I, and I went to Europe in the early uh, 2000s, we went, to, we went to Europe, spent a, a month or two just traveling around France, rented a house, and, and um, uh, um, Cinema took the pictures. I actually hired her to take all the photos, and we had a ladder, and she could climb up on things. And, and, and the thing is, because she was an artist and had... Also, she, I didn't have to tell her, if I said I need a picture of that, I didn't have to explain what kind of picture I wanted, nor do I ever have to to John either, because he knows, and it made it so much easier. I think you that go comes Take down. a picture of that. I need a picture of that. Yeah, and that's all it was, was I need a picture of that, and, and that's all we needed to say. And we got these beautiful pictures. And a lot of times, her pictures were so good that I could take a picture and... Um, uh, I'd take a, make a painting right from the picture, right from the photograph. I didn't have to change a thing. That's how good her photographs were. But a lot of times, you're not that lucky. To, to, to really good, get pictures, like, for instance, uh, um, some, you, the best time to take pictures if you're outside is early morning or late afternoon. And when you're traveling, that isn't always the luxury you have. But being aware of your light source and your composition and trying as, as much as you can with that, that never hurts. Okay, so you see how I'm kind of layering the colors here as I do this? Does that make sense? Any questions, John? One yeah, second. Yvonne would like to know, what's the name of the village you visited in France, stayed in, in France? Uh, we, we, we went, to, we were in southern France, and we... Um, it was it was in, uh, up in the mountains above Carcassonne, and it was called um, think about it, Lava Steed, I think. And uh, we rent the, the French have this neat deal, you guys. Um, they've got this the thing called and I may not pronounce it right, but called geats. And geats are houses that are put on the market by by. French owner citizens, and they're regulated through the government. So the houses that you rent have to be a certain standard. If you rent a house that's a geet, the government um, holds the money, and the owner doesn't get paid if you're not happy. And, vir and virtually, the owner cannot get cheated by the by the potential leaser. Uh, by you know, for um, so it, it protects everybody, and there has to be a certain standard. And um, so we were lucky to rent one of those, and um, that made a big difference. Really big difference. And that wants to know what program do you use for the cropping? Depends on the computer. I've used both Photoshop. I've done it online. There's a program called Photo P. Oh it's, gosh! And for forty bucks, you can get you can get uh, Snagit. You get Snagit. Snagit's so easy. You don't even need to read the directions. I mean, I never. Blah read blah the blah 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 blah. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> the directions. Who needs directions, right? Ugh. Right. Well, I'm just saying, you don't really. There's a lot of things online that can do it. I would yeah. do it and online. Your camera can do it. The what? Your camera can do it. Your camera can do it. Your camera, your cell phone can do it. To say my camera can't do it. But your cell phone can do my it. My cell phone can do it. Yeah, your cell phone can do it. And um, and if you don't know how, I would bet dollars to donuts 
I don't know how many dollars donuts are, but uh, I would bet dollars to donuts that someone's done a video on how to use your cell phone to, to crop a picture. I would just say, wouldn't you think so, John? Oh, I would think so. And um, and depending on the type of cell phone you oh, have. Oh, Jazz, Jazz has a good idea. It's uh, Snapseed. What it's is called it? Snapseed is the best photo editor for your phone. It's an excellent photo editor. Oh, okay. Snapseed is made for both iOS and Android. Oh, that's helpful. Isn't that helpful? That's helpful right there. Like that. See, this is why we have group chat and everybody's paying attention to what we're saying and they're answering these great questions. So what is it? How do you say You're the name of that? they're paying attention. What? S say that name of that program again, John. What is Snap it? Snap Seed. S-E-E-D? S-N-A-P-S-E-E-D. Is it free or do you have to buy it? It would be free. <gasps> free so good, isn't it? <laughs> Who can't get past free? I mean, I like free. Oh my! So funny. I remember the first time. Um, see, I'm going off topic all the time. I'm the only one that's allowed to do that. The first time, um, one of my best friends turned up. I think it was sixty, and we suddenly were allowed discounts at department stores. Uh, you know, at the certain days, if you were 60, you got a discount. I said, this is great. We can come in here and find what we want. And we can, I'll pay you back. You can use your discount code. She goes, if you tell anybody I'm 60, we're done. And never, never ask for that discount. She just, I said, you don't understand. This is a deal, man. Don't you want it? Yeah, it's just, just a little bit different. So then, um, could, <laughs> Anyway, it's funny. I think uh, she's a little older now. She's uh, like five years older than me. So now um, she's happy. To, she's figured out that that maybe isn't such a terrible thing, right? Asking for a discount code. Uh, I tell you. I mean, and this is why we give. You know, well, yeah, speaking of discounts, we do give discounts to the seniors that are 60 and above, veterans, police officers, fire civil servant type people we do and we do that because i mean i i i, I remember thinking that there's got to be you know you <laughs> you got to have some upside to spending to doing some, what you're doing to doing what you're spending a little time on the planet right i figured there's an upside there ought to be like a little upside to that so uh, donna would like to know do you think that painting odg paintings is good practice Donna, I'll tell you what you can learn from old DG, old DG paintings. The, oh, the artists that have, you know, in the 1800s, the, the, you know, these older artists that have come before, what you can learn from them is painting design because uh, with the exception of very few of them, they spent years in art school and got great instruction on design and light and darks. And when you see some of the ones, some of the very best are in museums. Yeah, or or they um, sometimes what they did, which was interesting too, is what what these guys did was they um, um, uh, they came up with a way of painting no one had thought of. So you know that a lot of them, many of them are known for the fact that they innovated painting. Uh, they they took it to the next level. You know when Van Gogh was alive, he he sold like one painting and traded one. He didn't do well with his stuff at all. People, that people. He really was ahead of his time as far as um, uh, what makes a good painting, that kind of thing. And um, so, uh, but you can learn an awful lot. And and if you just, uh, you, sometimes you can. Um, and also, it helps to see the brush strokes. What you have to keep in mind is that the, the photography on these. Um, the museums are guard their uh, their paintings because they, the, the, even oil paintings will fade, and they don't want. That's why you're not allowed to use flash in a museum and stuff like that, right? And so, um, what'll happen is is that uh, the um, color that you see, or sometimes you, you're not you're not, you're not necessarily going to see exactly what that painting looks like unless you see it in a museum. You, you, there's a big difference, I, I feel, from what you see in the museum and any any photograph. You can get close and you can get the values and all that stuff, but things fade over time for sure. But, yeah, that's a great benefit from doing that. And one of the reasons we do it in the academy 
for that reason. We do it because there is there is a benefit from doing that. See how I've just saved that little bit of a line there, and then I'll just take this brush. If you haven't gotten one of these angle brushes yet, the Ruby Satin Silver uh, 3 8 inch angle brush, and it just makes such, because you can, you can put it right on the edge when they're new. Boy, they just, they're, they're so nice, the way you can just um, do a fine line. You can do a fine line with these. And, uh, you know, that makes a big difference. Sally's watching one of our older tutorials, and you're using structural paint. Remember, that's when Matisse Heavy Body is called. Yeah, Heavy Body Matisse Structure. I um, I used to get it at Jerry's for, like, free, and it's very good paint. And uh, Jerry's used to give it to me when I worked there for free from the online. I used to, so I got in the habit of using it. The thing about it is, is that... Um, um, the, Jerry's doesn't really sell it as much anymore. Uh, other other people sell it, and if you live in Australia, it's great. Um, it's a very very good paint, um, uh, and uh, I like the, I use I use that, and I you'll see me use golden, and in our uh, videos that we do in our academy, we'll use either golden, or our larger paintings. You know, I use this this Salvador for these small little pictures, but the videos that we do in our academy are all done with heavy body structure paint. We use either Holbein or golden as the preferred. Yeah, Holbein, and, I, and, I, and Cinnamon introduced me to Holbein. Um, and I, I, the Holbein's a little tricky to learn to use because the the pigment is so strong that um, you can overmix it. You can get you know, put a little yellow and blue together and you're going, wow, I didn't have any idea it was gonna be that such a strong color. And um, that's that's the... Um, can you tell us what color you're using right now? Right now I've got the, the two yellows. I've got the, light, the two light yellows. And then I'm using a little bit of that orange color. And then the, 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 these, the, the Salvador paint kits has like five, five yellows. And I'm using these these right here to just try to get the, the leaves. Um, I, I want them just a little bit brighter, okay? And, uh, and, while, and while this is still wet, I'm just kind of gonna put some of these on. And let's see what else can I do. I can, this is a little burnt sienna in here. And um, while well, this is still wet, if I do something like that and wipe the brush off, I can come right up next to it, make a thin line. Um, I think I'll darken this up a little bit in here too. Yeah, this is the paint still staying nice and wet for me. Um, which makes it a little bit easier to uh, to do this, and I got a little bit of light edge on the yellow. Just yellow is one of those colors that um, in in acrylics, for for whatever reason, they it doesn't paint over as easily as um, let me put this a little redder here. It doesn't paint over as easily as um, um, Oh, some of the other colors do. You really need, yellow needs to be over white. And if you want red really bright, it doesn't hurt to put it on white either. If you want a really, really bright red. You plan on putting on a few coats. Yeah, you put on a, yeah, just one of those things. Red is one of those colors. Here's a little red here. If I made this a little darker up here, I'll just say that there's a little bit this. I'll come back here like that. Just sort of painting in these leaves like that. We're just kind of doing this. This is what I would call a loose painting. Um, a lot of different things about, I was wondering about, what you know, something about white teapots. I was given, I think, I'll tell you why I like this picture so much. When, when I first got married back to Cinnamon's dad back in, oh, it was 1965. Whoa, blow well, yeah. the dust off that memory bank. Yeah, so, um, Somebody gave me this beautiful white teapot. It looked very much like this. And I had it for years. And it wasn't that I used it that much, but I had just, if you ever had something you've just hung on to for so long, it's basically like a family member. And I remember when it broke, not broken, how sad I was about it. 
because that not because I liked it, not that because there was a million other teapots out there that were perfectly awesome and I could buy, but just because it was like a family friend at that point that had broken it. Um, all right, so you can see now, right now everything's a little flat. So while that's drying, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to let that dry for a second. Um, one of the things you guys know is we have an Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, and one of the things that we have is um, uh, every week we, we introduce a new a lesson. And this week we introduced the tomatoes in the paper bag. We probably talked about that last week, right? But I know that not everybody um, People say, well, why do you release so many things? And they're, they're all detailed. It's just my voice and them detailed step, step by step, and total instruction. But I know that not everybody cares about a paper bag and tomatoes. Now, it might appeal to some people, but it doesn't always appeal to everybody, right? Let's see if I can get this one picture up here. Okay. Um, so if you want to back out, John. I want to show you, I'm not sure when we're going to, we're going to release this. This will be probably later on in the month. Uh, John wants to back up. Yeah, I'm good. Um, here's our our cowboy. Let me just turn this over so you know. And um, uh, this is our, our, our um, uh, outlaw cowboy. And again, this is a step-by-step -step instruction. It's on 16 by 20 canvas. Uh, we do be, we do teach you how to paint larger things and, and how to do stuff like that. And, and this is a really good one from a painting design standpoint and what we've done. And I, I really liked it. And what was interesting to me was when I had a good reference photo for this and our cowboy was wearing this face mask. And I thought, well, it's almost kind of, the last of COVID too, kind of in a way, if you think about it, with this little face mask, he's got his, he's an outlaw, but he's wearing his mask anyway, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought it was sort of funny. He got a little bullet hole in the window and uh, had a little, little little spittoon down here. Had a little fun with this. And I hope you guys, hope you guys like that. So for those of you who, you know, thinking, well, tomatoes are nice, but I sure would like to learn to paint other stuff. We're doing that. Now this week, we're going to be releasing um, we've got, you know, somebody had noticed that some, in our older videos, some of them you've seen me use a paper plate for these small ones. You did, man, I got letters about that. That is the most environmental, <laughs> unfriendly thing you people have ever done, blah, blah, blah. So I, so I stopped doing that. And um, th this is a new, this will be this week in the Academy. But we're going to show it to you right side up and not upside down. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Um, this is the this is the reflection how to paint reflections. I actually this is replacing our old pepper. Um, this is re, we're starting to go back and replace some of our older videos. This is going to replace the one the, the yellow pepper with reflections, and this will be released for this weekend. If you um, haven't had a chance to watch the pepper, this would be a good one to do too. And you can see it's totally it's a different technique than the way you'd paint this bag but maybe not how you'd paint the tomatoes when you start looking about blending ins with reds or yellows, you see? So I like to follow up with some of that stuff. It, it makes a difference. And that's what we'll be we're releasing this week in the Academy. And um, remember, you can just join for a month, paint everything you can over, oh, way, way over 400 lessons now. Paint the things that are interesting to you and then just tell John you just try us for a month, see what happens. So, it's self-paced learning at its best. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. So now we're going to, you'll notice in the photo that there's a little bit of, um, here's our actual photo. There's a little bit of a shadow under here and under the leaf a little bit here, and a little bit of a shadow here, which we're gonna put in, okay? That was, there's, that, that's like Steffi's crop. And um, the nice thing about, um, Painting something that's black and white, and it's almost black and white except for these colors, but in the neutral tones, is that you have the option of um, uh, picking, picking a color that you like. Yes, you can do that. There's somebody the white up here. I'm gonna just pull that over here like that, and I'm gonna put up a little of the shadows. I think I wanna do a little bit of 
more white on here and then we'll play with this a little bit more um any questions sean uh not that i'm seeing okay I'm going to give a thumbs up so and give you guys a link for the giveaway for tonight. Yeah, we, 301. We got a ways to go. Oh my gosh, yeah, there's we 433 of you out there. Okay, so yeah, thumbs it up. It doesn't hurt because remember, somebody's going to win this, and um, I want a little bit of a a blue and a red, oh, a little bit of a purple shadow. I'm going to use a little bit of this transparent white. Transparent and, white, mixing white, and zinc yeah, white. Yeah. And uh, all pretty much the same. There we go. Let's put a little bit of little a yellow in the purple. It tones down the purple. Let's put a little blue in it. There we go. That's sort of a pretty color. I think I saw, um, I think it was Karen made a comment that I've been watching your lessons and I should be using other brushes besides the angle brushes. Should I learn other brushes? Well, um, I tell you what, I never, until I found an angle brush, I, I primarily use uh, Ruby Satin Brights, all, all sizes. And Brights are, are the brushes that are uh, squared Very across, square. straight across. And then, of course, um, uh, and, and this is as large as the, ang the angles don't come up bigger than that. So, I mean, I'm telling you, on a big painting, um, here's a bright brush. Right? So I might use that and then just use and something with a really good edge so I could get the edge. I, um, but, you know, pretty much brights and, and um, uh, are, are the, the probably my main focus as far as... Um, uh, what I use as far as a, um, what uh, brushes I use, and because um, the angles are so nice for for details, I just I, I just really like those a lot. I mean, there, but there's a lot of different brushes to use, and, and you know, if you're if John had a picture next time, I could show you the hundreds of brushes I've gotten in the studio. I've got hundreds of them. Literally hundreds of brushes, all sizes. Because I see a brush, I buy. For instance, this is a neat one right here. Look at that, right? That's a. That's. I don't think you can even get these anymore. This is. I use this brush. This is a Galleria number no. forty, Windsor Newton, and it's again, it's a bright brush. But I use this for giant backgrounds that's on big paintings, and you know, and for big underpaintings and stuff. So I, I use all kinds of brushes, um, and of course, I use the round ones and stuff too. But um, um, Nanny would like to know um, what colors do you use for shadows? Um, I'm using sort of a, 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 a purple a blue shadow because it's a complement of, of, of um, yellow and it would depend on what I'm painting what, what shadows I, I would be using for instance if I want a darker shadow under here I'll make it a little bit darker right where this leaf is coming through and um uh, let's see, I think this came, um, I think we had the end of this teapot. Yvonne right would here. like to know, I have phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Do I need any other blues? Um, if you watch my, there's, I've got a YouTube video called Adventures in Blue, and I, and uh, the, the Jerry, uh, Jerry's Artorama when I was working there, the manager George Rodriguez gave me every color blue they had, and I did a sort of a test with them. And what I discovered is, is that pretty much I personally could make every blue, pretty much some variation of that, uh, with phthalo blue. And ultramarine blue, okay. And um, Matisse had a Southern Ocean blue that was a combination of phthalo green and phthalo blue and white, which is sort of convenient. And um, let me just show you in our color mixing journal, which is a, 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 a multi videos 
on how to mix colors, you can see that the, our, our, our two main color blues are always phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Those are our basics. How to take 12 colors plus two bonus colors. Make every other color there is. Pretty much you can with those. And so um, sometimes though, if you're doing a large painting, there's something to be said for convenience. You know what I mean? So if there's particular blue you like and you need to make a lot of it, um, it can be nice. And um, But for the most part, I would say that for me, it's phthalo blue and ultramarine blue are extremely nice to use. And, um, and they're ready to go. And they're ready to go. Absolutely. They're ready to go. Southern Ocean Blue is a good choice. I like Southern Ocean Blue, but you know what? I rarely, I, I rarely, I, and here's the thing. In our academy, uh, our, our online art school, in our online art school, um, the thing that um, we tried to do was to not make you break the bank in learning how to paint. You know what I mean? Um, are there some, you know, some colors that would be nice to have? Sure. Always there's something nice to have, right? Like you could always buy, like magenta is a, you know, color that is nice. I mean, that, that's just one of my favorite colors, but a lizard crimson is a cool color too, and um, it's nice to have. And um, that would be um, a fun color. I mean, that would be, that's a nice color that you could have. And, but uh, you don't, see, you may not see me use it in a tutorial because again, I want people to have to run out and buy stuff. Right, it just but but for your own personal use, that's the trick. For your own personal use, you may find like like um, you may find it's just uh, darn convenient. How's that? Darn convenient to have um uh to have a um a, a variety of extra paint along that maybe you just didn't know you were going to want right this minute, but now you do, right? Hey, Carol, I'd like to know, do you use a hog hair brush to blend the backgrounds? Oh, uh, no. Well. Well, kind of, not, not really. I mean. Not, <laughs> not in this particular case, but sometimes when you do your. Well, the big ones, we use the, these big ones. These, get these, the round guy out that you always the use. The big round ones we use, like the, 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 here's one, Simply Simmons. I don't know which one that is, but Simply Simmons is a good one. Uh, that's a good brand. They also make a very good uh, the Simmons brush line makes a pretty good angle brush. I don't like it as well as the Ruby Satin Silvers, but it's not bad if you can get those. And uh, this is the Signet number 408 round, and it's, um, I don't think it's hog hair, but you know, it's a very stiff, mostly synthetic for, for acrylic. Um, I would say mostly synthetics. Kind of, kind of lighten this background here and then just Put a drop of water on this right like that and just smear that out, kind of soften that right there. Kind of lighten this. Acrylics have a tendency to dry dark, darker, so I'm kind of lightening that up to get a little bit more of the, um, you know, just kind of play a little bit more at the background here too. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber make a very nice dark brown. You guys know that? Ultramarine blue and burnt umber is a really, a really good dark brown and um, very effective way to uh, some people buy the you know I have bought the Van Dyke brown before like in the in the fluids for thin lines but boy does that have a shine to it you know stuff I bought the real shine to it I made the mistake once of doing an underpainting with that and boy was I ever sorry um, here it goes just something like that here we go so uh, like I say, it's uh, lots of different ways to paint something. We just try to keep it as simple. Sometimes it's fun to experiment, and I would certainly never, I would encourage anyone to, to experiment a little bit, too. It never hurts to do that, just sort of, just kind of taking the background. I'm talking about a table here. We're just taking the background and doing that. Um, you know, like this. Now we'll put on a, some of the shadows on the teapot and so forth and try to do this a little bit more precise. Um, I remember going to a, a, mm -hmm. an art show one time, an art talk. This lady was giving a talk and she just used three colors because 
some art teacher told her to use three colors. These are the colors I use, but you know, a lot of people use different palettes. You know, there's lots of paint out there. Listen, for sure, right? So I think I've got a little bit of magenta here. It's just kind of a magenta color and a little bit of blue. I'm getting clear sound, John, but I can't see what you're doing. But you have no video? You would have to quit your application or your browser or try refreshing and come back into it. You just lost the video part of it. Yeah, that's not good. Has anyone tried the golden flat paint that was just introduced? Uh, that's that one that we have some that Judy sent us. Yeah, it was. We uh, tried it. The, yeah, we don't understand us. what's the big deal with. Do you want a matte finish? Varnish it matte. Or put a matte medium with your paint. So we don't have any reason to go out paint. and buy more paint. So we're, we're not really sure what the, what the deal is. But it works just like the other paints. Nothing different. Let me show you something new. Oh. This is called Golden Open Medium. Wow. Where did you get that from? Golden Company Online. Oh. And what it does is it for those of you who are having terrible trouble blending, what it, it does... It is marvelous. It just... Um, it stays, it keeps your paint open a little bit longer. Okay. A lot longer. Like a lot longer. And it doesn't thin it out. Okay. It's like taking your regular heavy body paint and making it into an open for a moment or two. Mm hmm. And what it does is it allows you to, those of you who are having trouble, you know, getting this blending stuff down. You know, it just it's a it's a great cheat, and I don't think even the word cheat is fair because I mean if this helps you then it's not cheating, is it? Any more than it's cheating to cook with a That's microwave. That's what I always told the teacher. It's anywhere that that it's cheating to cook with a microwave, right? So I'm gonna just make a little bit of this color here and just it's not a glaze. It's a, you know some people might think of it as a glaze, but it really isn't a glaze, but it is a um uh. A little bit of a darker color here. We have the matte one. We have the matte. We have it's called matte. Go Golden Open Medium Matte. They make it in a gloss as well. But again, you varnish. You should be varnishing your paintings when you're done, and you decide what you want at that time. That's right. I'm gonna just put so a it's little. called Golden Open Medium, and it does extend the drying time. It makes it into an open paint. It does. It's kind of neat the way it, it, it works too. Because like for instance, I take some white paint up here now. I've got a little bit of the gold and a little bit of the white and I want to blend this shadow. See this little shadow here? I want to blend these shadows together. I'll wipe this off and look at, look at how I can just smudge out the edge of that shadow. Just all muse it together. Yeah, so this is, um, well, it's almost like doing it on a computer. Yeah, it's really nice. So you can you can take it and and you can you can work with it so much easier. So Karen would like to know. So the medium will help me if I feel like my paint is always drying before I can blend it. You Absolutely, betcha. that's what it's for. That's why I like it. I don't paint as fast as Ginger. Nobody paints as fast. Well, the as reason Ginger. I learned to paint so fast is because the stupid paint dries so quickly. You see me going a mile a minute because I learned I learned to do that as fast as I could go, right? And why is that? Because the paint paint dried out too quickly. Yes and yes. Yes, I would give it extra time to dry before you varnish it. Absolutely, you have to treat it like an open. Yeah, you got to You got to Yeah, you got to You got to give it extra time to, before you varnish, right? For sure. What's the difference between open medium and a standard retarder? Huge differences. Standard retarders get sticky really fast. This yeah. Doesn't. This is open like, medium. Oh, you're using the they, actual. They got a patent on this stuff it. for a reason. Golden got a patent on this for a reason. They know what they're doing. They have a patent on their golden opens. Different formulation. Yeah. Absolutely. John, you're a genius. I can see everything and then some. Well, don't be looking too closely. There you go. But you can see how I can take a 
like here's a clean brush and here I'm going here like this with a clean brush and I'm just kind of see how I'm kind of blending that in is that a dry brush yeah well, it's that slightly damp okay see how I'm kind of blending it in so it's got this wonderful soft look about it looks like I'm in watercolors yeah, isn't that pretty? I mean, it really is pretty how that works. And I'm kind of layering in some purple here now. Yeah, you can layer with it. Now, if you want to do multiple layers, you may have to dry between them. You can still use a hair dryer. Yeah, where I found with the, um, we actually have a tutorial coming up in the academy where I do this cat, and I do, I used, I actually have a full set of golden opens. And so I used a full set of the golden open paints and did the cat. And then I used the you know regular acrylics and did it. And um, um, you know I think that for me what's happened is I've learned so much about having you know painting with um, regular acrylics that um, um, that I for the most part I don't do stuff like this but it is very handy when you're doing something like this teapot and you want the shadow to show and you don't want it to be real dark and um, you want we the, really want a smooth blend you want a smooth blend and so if you're in a dry environment Colorado Arizona this is for you and then when we tell you that when you when you do stuff like this what the, what our, the trick is um, do a little bit of experiment. This, there's a reason that we paint on these small canvases. Paint on a small canvas, kind of see where you are. Um, see, I mean, it just, I mean, you can really get a nice effect here, can't you? Don't you think so? I think so. And then I'm just gonna, now, now I don't have any more on my brush. It's just some regular white paint. Put the highlights in it. Put my highlights in it. Did you get your likes in, John? Is anybody even have you got the likes you need to give this away? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People are people are going crazy. Okay. All right. Because I just didn't want to, you want to show I'd like to show the big cat that we're gonna be doing, the big painting. John, do you think Ginger will be doing a wolf for the VLL in the near future? I've got we one have picked a couple out. Wolfies I've got a picked couple out. picked out for sure. For sure. We only got like eight hundred lessons that we still want to paint. So yeah, and yeah, I we, had a wolf. We got we more animals. Retire, so yeah, we'll have one. How long does it stay open? As long as a regular open does. Yeah. Which is quite a while. Notice I'm putting a little shadow right above the spout right here. See that? You want this one? I want to show them the big painting. Yeah, that one. And so I'm not done, but there it is, right? So this is what we're, what I'm working on. You rarely get to see my artwork in progress unless you're an Academy member, but I'll show them what I'm working on. No. You guys here? No, we want to show them. We can do that. Don't show ones the ones with the golden open. Yeah. Well, maybe day open. Yeah. So you can see that it's a, there's a nice way to um, to uh, do the teapot and. Um, I want a little bit of white up here like that. Just pure this is just pure paint. And uh Ray makes an interesting comment, makes it look like an oil painting when blending this way. Exactly. It really does work well. Um, and then if I, I can erase it a little bit. Now, do you see how I'm, now see what I, I did a yellow underpainting. Do you see an orange underpainting? Now what I'm doing is taking some water and erasing some of the paint. Do you see that little bit of orange that's sticking up there? Like a and reflection from below. those. See, if I do this, I can pull this clear down to the, the underpainting. And look at that little bit of orange that's showing through. It was still wet. 
because this is still wet, I can still do it, right? And it's called rinse, wipe, swipe, but you can see the more you do it. See a little bit of orange on this teapot um, would be a little bit trickier to do. Yes and yes. Uh, and then I've got, I'm saying that that's from our little leaf here. So what you're getting is if you have a heavy body paint, regular heavy body paint, then you add the open medium to it, this will give you the same effect as buying a whole set of open paints. Yeah, so you have the best of both worlds. Yes. Because sometimes you want to dry, you want to dry between because you want to do dry brushing above them, layers, and it's quicker that way. But if you want a good blending, you just grab a little, little bit of the open medium. And again, we chose matte because it's, well, for photographing it, a lot easier when we're filming, for one. What's the difference between acrylic bottles and acrylic tubes? Usually Huge. the paint in a bottle is thinner. Yeah. It's meant for flowing. Oh, the other thing you can use Golden Opens for is if you bought a tube of paint like, say, this, um, which is in the fluid, and um, it's to get thin lines, right? You can put a little bit of the Golden Open with, with, a, uh, with a color, and it'll allow you to do much thinner lines. Remember how? See how? Remember how I, I wasn't getting a thin line right there? Look at that! And it allows the paint to flow. Um, it's really it's it's a it's a it's a neat effect. It allows the paint to absolutely flow in a way that you wouldn't think. Okay. It's one of those must have in the arsenal. Yeah, people say, say you know what, 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 you know, and as we find products, we'll tell you about them if we like them. But we're happy to tell you about them. If we find something that works better, if I found a brush that I like better, trust me, I'd be out there saying I like this better, not because anybody pays me to say, to say anything about it. It's just because I like it better. I like it better. And so I'll tell you, you know, I mean, you know, for years, um, I, I didn't um, use anything but bright brushes till I discovered these. And then I'm going, well, these are better for the way I paint. And it's so interesting because the lady that owns Golden's. Not Golden. Uh, no, rather the lady that owns the Silver Brush Company didn't know that, you know, most artists that use the angle brushes are more of the toll painters. And um, they're, they're much, you know. The, the, different style painting. Different style painting. So, I mean, I think that's sort of interesting, don't you, in a sense? Here, let, let me just let this dry for just a second before I go um, too far, but I want to just... So you can do these great thin lines. I mean, how could you not love that, right? And you can just... You can do these beautiful, beautiful thin lines. So the challenge number four is up and available for your viewing pleasure on acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. Yeah, that was one we thought there were, the, 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 this next challenge that we're doing. This is a fun one. It's a fun one because we feel like there's a lot of um, ways you could do this. So you have to put your thinking caps on this one. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you could uh, paint that. How's that? And, um, and not just... Um, not just one way. There's so many different ways that you could you could paint this. So let's see. I and to participate in it, you just have to be a green member, which is our free level membership, and gives you access to it. So if you're just go to the acrylic painting with gingercook.com, sign up as a green member, and the link is not on the front page yet, but it will be after the show. If you go under the menu listing, you can find a listing for the challenges and you'll go to number four. I just did that a little darker down there so you'd have a little bit more of a shadow there um, coming out from this. Like that, well, it's just a little bit more. And uh, For those of you that have not subscribed yet, I recommend you do it now before the subscriptions get filled up. You can always say that. 
And if you haven't been getting our newsletter, check your junk folder. Um, you know, we sometimes we'll just do a newsletter with them. Um, um, well, all we've been doing lately is just the announcements on Monday, right before the show. Yeah, if you haven't been getting the these Monday announcements, um, we're getting woefully behind on our other one. Yeah, we're, we're trying, right? <laughs> You can see, I mean, this, I it's think... It's still only 24 hours in a day, no matter how much I plead with the Congress to give me more. I know. It's just useless. I just can't get more hours. They're just useless, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. You know, what good are they if they can't give us more hours in a day, yeah? That's my point exactly. There we go. So you can see we've got some nice shading on this. Um, it's coming along very nicely. And this is an interesting uh, example of a photograph that has several different light sources. It's got the overhead, doesn't have all the same light sources. So it can be a little bit confusing. Um, but you as an artist just have to decide how you want to convey the message. Exactly. Okay, so kind of put that little spout on uh, a little bit more than we, than we had it. And um, let's do a little color surprise here. Let's do a little bright orange on this somewhere. Which is a nice color. And um, let's see, I think I, that's nice. I like this little bit of light above the, um, above this teapot, right? Cause it's, you know, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. I like that little bit of light right there above that handle. Like that. That's kind of nice. Kind of let you see that a little more. Okay, well, that, let me let that dry for just a second before we do any finishing touches on it. Let me show you something. We talked about um, the, the the challenge. For those of you who came in late, this was the original challenge for this week. A lot of you entered. And this was, we said, how would you crop this? Now, now the interesting thing is we, we had two camps, so to speak. We had those that said, oh, the cat is the subject, and they focused on the cat. And the other one said, the cat is so stupid, and cut the cat out. Yeah, so it, it was really very, fun. We did two, two camps on this. <laughs> it was we, very we, cut and dry on that one. We did because uh, I thought it was a painting I could do easily on YouTube. Not wasn't necessarily my favorite, though I do like it, Steffi, but I'm just saying it wasn't my favorite, but because we had to do that. And like I said, we had a lot of people come in before, and the one we finally settled on to do a large painting of was this one by Pamela T. Um, she reversed, she flipped the whole thing and had the cat looking at it. And so then what, if you'll, John will have to really back out. I'm not done with this painting yet. I'm about halfway through, but here's where, what I've started. Um, on the on the picture now. I'm about, like this I is say, 12 by 24. This is 12 by 24. And this will, then what we're going to do with this, this will be in our store, um, Curly Painting with GingerCook.com when it's done. And all of you who um, participated in the challenge will have a, a, a can get a coupon for 50% off. Yes? Yeah. And Pamela, Pamela, off. you get it. You get the tutorial. You but you have, have to write me and tell me you want it. If you want it, you get the complete one, right? Or the value of the tutorial, whatever that ends up being, to buy something else if you'd rather have it. So we don't know how much tutorials are until they're done. So we don't know. We it it all depends on how many hours are in them. But you guys, that's what, and we thank you very much for participating in that. And then the other question that came up was, um, uh, somebody asked about the golden opens. And so, uh, um, so we did an experiment. So we did an experiment. This was the first painting I did of this cat, and it's all done with uh, golden opens. That's golden open paints. That's golden open paints. So that every bit of it was done with golden opens. And I quite liked how it came out. I don't know that it took me any longer, did it, John? No, no. There were four minutes difference in timing. And then this is the second one I did with our just regular You can put them acrylics. side by side. You know, and probably painting it the second time. You can time. put them side by side. Oh, all right. So it's probably painting them with regular acrylics. I might have found some things. I wanted to emphasize the eyes a bit more in this, but I could have done it with that one, too. So but again, the second time you painted it, you do But you can see thing. how smudged this out is. Now, conversely, if I were going to do this again, I would use this. And the areas that I wanted to just blend out a bit more, I would add this to it. Does that make sense? 
and you know and get that smudgy effect in places and then in places where I didn't want it um, I would I still have it and also I really like the fact you can get such thin lines with it so um, with that golden uh, open matte medium and do we have that in our store anywhere we can put it in there the matte medium no, I don't think it's in there yeah yeah I don't think it is on the Amazon store it's there on the Amazon store yeah yeah I think we did put it there so if you guys wanted to find out what that was and again, we want to thank the donations that have come in through the PayPal system. And I, anybody, I think if you haven't seen that already, these three paintings here, um, are the the, uh, the people that have been donating on the last quarter, the last every three months, we've been giving away the choice of one of three paintings. These are the three we'll, that they will have, the, the winner will have a pickup. We'll do a random drawing of anybody that has been donating um, $100 or more either through the... And that can be cumulative over the three month period. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all in one chunk. If you've done at least $100, you're, you're entered into uh, winning. Uh, one of these and this is the current quarter is up on May 31st May 31st will be the current quarter so you know so you know we thank you thank you very much uh, for that the, you know and uh, you know listen a dollar helps and you know so we appreciate it. when you when you go to the live chat and put in you know when you're doing the live chat and you put in a dollar it makes a difference and we appreciate it very much so um, and speaking of donations we'd like to thank Carmen for the donation that came in through the PayPal system thank you thank you thank you Oh. Do we still need to have the glazing medium? Absolutely, they're different. Glazing is going to make it a glaze where you can see through it, transparent. In fact, Open does let's, not. let's talk about, here's some glazing medium right here. Whoops, just keep dropping that in the paint, that poor thing. Okay, so here's some satin glazing medium, right? One of our favorites. And one of our favorites. Now, if I were to use that on this, and I think I, it, the thing is, it's still wet, so that's, I'm, I'm, you really don't want to do this while it's still wet. We're going to do it anyway, right? But, just... You, you wait, really, wait, 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 wait. Why don't you grab one of our test canvases and do something? Oh. Well, I would, except they're buried. Here, maybe I'm Isn't there a, the purple one laying around somewhere that was out earlier? Was it? Is it? <laughs> purple? Out earlier? Did well, we had one just laying there. That you had. Did we have some laying there? I might have. I don't know. Did we? Uh, that's so funny. Um, uh, I had a yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. I had a friend that was babysitting someone's grandfather, and he took off on her. And all right, so here's see you can see look at do you see the backgrounds. See how yeah. see how these are neat these are neat colors. But I want to glaze over something white, like here's something pink, right? So if I wanted to glaze use glazing medium, um, let me just put a little bit of that there. Um, just uh, just put a drop there there. Okay, now. Satin glazing medium. I like the satin. The gloss makes everything shine. But not the satin. So what you do is you take a little bit of. Well, it's mostly glazing this medium with a little bit of color. So let's take some blue, for instance. That's pretty. And um, and I can show you. I want to do a little bit of a. You see how transparent this is. If I want to tint, you see, you can tint, you can, you know, can do a very nice transparent shadow with glazing medium if you wanted. Because you want that, maybe you want the shadow to be, um, you know, showing, you know, glazing medium, and or you could do something, you can do something a bit stronger. It's a little red. So you can tint something a bit stronger. It's almost like laying cellophane over something. Does that make sense? Like laying, laying a layer of cellophane. You, if you're going to glaze over one color, you have to dry it first. You don't want to go blue over red. You just you don't want to do that. But you could do that. So that's how glazing medium works. It's always meant to be kind of a little translucent, and it can always go over something lighter than itself. Okay. So that's it for glazing medium. If you guys want to know about that, but I'm happy to share that with you. And, Are all the Academy lessons in the new website? No. no. We wish they were. Take, it'll take months. We're shooting for by the end of summer down take, to one website. That's the goal. That's the goal, right? That is the goal. We have to have a goal in life. Okay. And that's it. Right now we have all of the basic beginner, beginner acrylic artists is there except for the auctions, which I should start working on shortly. 
you can just you can still the neat thing about this this is dry enough still a little tacky but it's dry enough where you can go over it if i want a little bit more white right here i can get that right a little bit a little bit of a white highlight here just to make it a little bit more shiny or a little bit right up here on the top of this there you go hey we'd like to thank jackie for the donation that came in through the paypal system oh thank you very, thank you very much. much appreciate that very much thank you I think that we got a good, I think we have a good example of how you might uh, do this, don't you, John? I think you have an excellent example, my queen of mine. And uh, the only thing I would do a little differently is why you keep doing um, just come up here like this and um, make sure I have this shadow here by here like that. I want to make sure that that's dark enough. I want this. I want this to you to see this. Do you have a tutorial just on glazing mediums? Uh, yes, it's in our um, a quintessential. Uh, it's in the quintessential mixing guide. And then we have a lot of them that do, do that. You know, require. We use glazing. the glazing medium a lot, so a we, lot we of them are in there. Yeah, even on YouTube, actually, we we have a lot, right? Don't you think? Yeah. We have a lot, even on YouTube. We have. Um, Okay, there we go. Just take that down a bit here. All right, I think I'm done with this. I feel like we've got a fun teapot, and I think this is something all of you should be able to do easily. Um, and um, I hope you had fun. I hope you have fun with um, with trying these out. These different. Um, different mediums. Try out the different mediums because depending on where you live. Um, a lot of it depends depending where you live. Let's see. I want to bring this light. Ooh, up Patricia would like to know how about puzzles? I'm thinking at the end of summer. You got to get the website done first. So we're sort of our, our new our, our other challenge right now is just to do the um, you know, just, just get everything over there. We still have another 400 lessons to go. I've got pieces picked out already too. I mean, I'm ready to go, but I can't maintain that yet. There you go. I just needed something under there. Oh, that was just it, wasn't it? A little light behind that teapot, right like that. See, well, some of these little stuff could make such a difference. And let's do that up here, too. Let's put a little light up here in the front. There we go. Let's just play with the light a little bit, you guys. All right. I think that's I, I, I but I'll stop. I'll stop. But I see something else. You're going, she always sees something else, right? See where I want it. That's just, why we're never done. Well, it's not so much that. Now, this is where I could use a little glazing medium because I just want a little color on here. See? Right there on that side of the teeth, the, the lid. Just not much, just a little side. bit. See? Glazing is is wonderful for, for this kind of thing. Just a little bit, you know, just a little bit more. You can do all that. All right, you guys, this was fun. Somebody's going to win this. Who's gonna, John's going to be a drawing for this last chance to, to get it in. Um, if I have a Posca pen, I'm going to do one little thing while he's... How many entrees do we have, you might ask? How many entrees do we have, I'm ask, ask, ask myself. We're only at 240. 240, okay. Did you ever read me a frame? Did you ask me when I was out? No, but I asked you before you started. No, you asked me after I was already in. Oh. So you have a little bit more time. I have to get out for the queen. She wants a frame. I want you guys to see what this would look like in a frame. It was going to look marvelous. This is a white Posca pens are real acrylic ink. And I think that they're very nice if you need to do just a few little details somewhere make sure everything's dry before you do it uh, because that's not otherwise it's you know you'll mess them up sometimes if you just need a, like a little you shake them up and oh here's a tip while he's finding the frame never shake any of these kind of paint pens with the cap off because you'll have that cap go across the room and paint going with it and it is a hot mess and this is a voice of experience here telling you that you don't want to do that for sure you don't want to do, do that at all oh good he's brought a frame because i think i think this is fun i want to thank steffi for um doing it i think the gold one that's what i was thinking but i wanted the queen's choice here's the gold frame here 
Go ahead and put it up there. When I'm not at the camera, so well, the he, he, well, I know he's not at the camera, but you guys have good imaginations. He's going to back out and let you see this. <laughs> you have a good imagination. Just imagine what it's going to look like. Oh, it does look pretty good. Let me back that off somewhere. Close up my hood a little bit. This is a kind of a calming painting. It's just sort of a nice feeling. Um, there we go. Kind of, it's kind of cozy. The tea kettle. The um, uh, it feels cozy, doesn't it? Have you ever had a cozy for your tea kettle? My yes. mother always no, had a cozy. Oh, the English invented those, I think. They're great. I want to do something. Can I do something? That's a little zinc white. Oh, so now we actually have some steam coming out. Yeah. Just don't you think it needed that? Now well, that's cozy. That now it's it? done. Now it's cozy. Yes and yes. Now it's cozy. Did you sign it? Uh, it's a little wet. I'll sign oh, okay. it when it's over. I'll sign it. Promise I'll sign it before we mail it off. You Ooh, promise? Please. Yeah. Who want it? Well, I don't know. I, I, I did you see me just sit down? <laughs> was it me that just sat down? Yes. Yeah, somebody is. else. Okay. So I have covered what we're going to be doing next week. We have we've talked about our moderators. We've talked about you know someone's going to win this uh, a paint set also. Uh, we showed you some fabulous new paintings that we're doing. Um, and uh, I just want to give a shout out to my daughter who's worked very hard on acrylic April. Uh, she worked for months. She's not even halfway through the month yet. And so right happy she goes on at live every day. Um, uh, and so that, that that's very, you know, it's, it's nice as a parent to, 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 you know, I mean, she could have decided to be a writer. You know, Cinnamon was one of the best writers in her whole school. They used to read her stories to the upperclassmen to show how stories should be written. She was a marvelous uh, mystery writer and, and sort of kind of more on the genre of Stephen King, but that was probably the age of great writers. She could have been a comedian, could have been anything else, but she turned out to be a great artist, and we're always we're very proud of her. And we appreciate the fact that... Um, she makes great soap. That's what I appreciate. Oh, yeah, boy, if you haven't, but yeah, the, her invention uh, of that her soap. like the best, and you can still get that. I thank you for, for that. And um, again, we uh, we do the step-by-step -step tutorials in our academy that are much longer and more detailed, starting with beginner, clear to the advanced, with uh, I'll put out all the chat. And um, uh, we're happy to help you with our, uh, you know, have you try us? You figured out who won yet? I have. I have to keep scrolling to find these people, though, because they keep giving me different numbers. So where do you think it, where do they live? Uh, I just found it. It's in Alabama. Alabama. Something, something. Alabama. Something's going to Alabama. Wow. Alabama. This is a teapot. Let me put that down. Tea Teapot's pot. going to Alabama, you guys. So we narrowed it down. This drum roll, please. The suspension oh, is killing us, have, right? Let's I don't have robots. Stuff name. like that, too. Suspension is killing us for now. What? Okay. Well, it's over here. Winner of the teapot is Joanne. 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 Too. Joanne. If you have a last name, I may need that. I could probably pull it from her email. I think it's Sharik. I believe. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, Joanne, um, for winning this. Now, the next thing we're going to be drawing for is the Salvador um, paints. And it's all the way at the other end. And that person's in Georgia. Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Okay, we changed states, but it's all, it's all gone down into the south. Well, last, last week we were at one end of the coast to the other end of the coast. That's true. You never know with random.org what you're going to get. I like that. that this is someone that they have that my face on the paints now. I love it. Ginger Cook says premium paints, great variety and coverage, five stars. Uh, that was my review on Amazon, and they, uh, it's true, five stars. Get five stars. The paint. And, of course, if you want to find out, you can go to our store, Ginger Cook um, store on Amazon. Uh, you can find the link on our website and uh, you know we have these uh, the thing about the men that you know for under $25 or a great deal 25 and less I mean and when you do the coupon codes are great you know we have those the coupon codes still work 
I think so. We think they do. Look at look look. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to they still work. You know, uh, we think they still work. I mean, they're 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 wonderful. If you're first starting out with acrylics and don't want to invest a couple hundred dollars in heavy body expensive big giant tubes of paint, uh, these it's the way to do it. You just like the convenience of sitting down and painting and not mixing a lot of colors. They're all out there for you. Um, and Donna great. Donna Evans. Donna Evans. Donna, congratulations. I think you're going to love Georgia. These. I'm going to give away one more thing, John. Okay. Just, just pick somebody, and I'll tell them what you want. Okay. Have you cleared this with the accounting department? I have not. We're going to oh. give away. We're going to give away to somebody because you all are hanging, hanging in there with us. We're going to yep. give you away a five dollar credit which will get you a lot of downloadable videos so we'll buy at least one really outstanding one let's make it thirty nine dollars thirty nine dollars thirty nine dollars uh, 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 toward a downloadable video on our website you can buy whatever you can buy with that or if you or want to apply it to something that's more expensive thirty uh, uh, acrylic painting with gingercook.com um, give you a good right. start on that. It's almost half the price of the of the the, the mixing journal uh, videos. So get a lot with that. So who won? Who who won that? That would be Edith Clark from Edith. Congratulations from from Canada. From Canada. Canada. Eh? Okay. So it's all right. So gosh, Edith, that's great. We get to we cross the borders here. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Don't answer it now, but... Oh, um, wait. You shouldn't ask it until we get ready to hang up because they start answering it right away. Oh. Is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. I want to thank our moderators again for being there. We love you guys for hanging out with us. We know that there's so many videos and people you could be watching on YouTube. We thank you spending your time with us. And we read all your comments and uh, appreciate everything you do. And I tell you what, if you haven't been in our... I love seeing what you paint when you... It's exciting to see what you're painting. You know what? You didn't. We didn't feature any of our stars here. Real quick, can we do oh, that? Oh, drat! And I didn't bring them over. Well, I want to congratulate some of. Uh, we'll have to show you next. But we had five people lined up that have been doing some terrific paintings. Today, you know, the day just got, got away from, from us, us. Uh, from our academy. That I wanted to, you know, Mary, um, uh, Mary Ann uh, Nazas, cool. you did a terrific job on your job lots, and um, uh, uh, Janine uh, from India, she did a Buttercup, and uh, we had uh, we had a bunch of those that have done such beautiful paintings. I wanted to share those with you, but I guess John. Didn't get them loaded, huh? Well, they didn't show up over on my on the other server. So uh, while he worked on the technical difficulties, I think we'll just sign off by saying that here's my question: is uh, if you will answer it in the comments after this video has a chance to process, come back and answer this. I want to know: has the cropping challenge made a difference for you, either in how you take photos? Or in how you're looking at paintings and photos to, to, and, and paint and photographs of paintings to paint. But no, and if you like this and want us to keep going with it, I'd really like to know how you feel about this photo cropping, these photo cropping challenges. And we'll see you next week with the next challenge. And if you want to know where that is, it's that the challenge is at um, acrylic painting with gingercook.com, and you see where it says a little button that says challenge. It'll take you right to the photo. Okay? As soon as I change it. <laughs> So you haven't changed it yet? Well, it'll be there. It'll be there. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.